Hey, what is going on everybody? It's your favorite introvert here and today we are going to be going over the general settings for the DJI Mavic Air. This is the settings that you are going to find once you get your Mavic Air and you're going to initially set it up. So we initially we enter into the app, the DJI Go 4 app. It will recognize your Mavic Air and you will press connect to your drone. You'll be greeted with this aircraft status page. It's basically an overlay of your camera screen that you are seeing here in front of you. As you can see, wave hello to the camera. How are you doing today? This is basically everything you need to know in a nutshell to enter in to your Mavic Air to make sure that there's nothing crazy going on. It will tell you your overall status, your flight mode, GPS, whether or not you're connected to your satellites. Compass is normal, IMU is normal, maximum altitude is set at 500 meters, maximum flight distance is disabled, my ESC status is normal, vision sensors are normal, my remote controller mode is in mode two, my remote controller battery is at 81%, my button customization for my function button, it is the navigation, and for my C button, it is for camera settings. My aircraft battery is currently at 55% and the temperature of my aircraft battery is at 40 degrees Celsius. Gimbal status is normal. Remaining SD card capacity, it gives you that it is set to 30,359 megabytes. And my internal storage is 8,000 megabytes, eight gigs of internal storage, 30 gigs of external storage on my micro SD card. So we are good to go. We can go ahead and close out of that. That'll basically give you all the information you need to know immediately to go fly. If there is any anomalies or anything that you need to check, you will be greeted by a red triangle with a exclamation point for status, meaning that you need to go check out and see what's going on. So greetings into the Mavic Air. This is your initial display for your camera. Like I said, hello. Let's go into your general settings. Three buttons up at the top right hand corner of your screen. It will introduce you to your general settings. This is again, basically what you just looked at, just in a more in-depth menu screen. In your general settings, you will find the units at which you will see displayed either miles per hour, metric is meters per second, or metric is kilometers per hour. That's good to know if you're flying and you don't wanna see meters anymore, you just select uh, Imperial and it'll show feet. Below that, it gives you a live streaming choice. Choose live streaming platform as Facebook Live, YouTube, Weibo, or custom. Basically set up whatever you would like. Next is your video cache options. Cache locally when you're recording, basically it'll cache to your device inside the DJI Go 4 app folder. Record audio with your video cache. Basically, if there's things you wanna record, if you're screen recording and you wanna record audio, it will start when you hit the record button on your Mavic Air. Largest video cache capacity, it'll only store up to two gigs, but remember you're recording at a 720p quality, I believe, so it's not gonna take up that much space. All right, you have your auto video cache cleanup, which basically it will, once it hits the two gig limit, it'll start cleaning up the older cache. This is good if you don't record that much to begin with. This is bad if you record a lot while you fly and you wanna reuse it, so use this um, at your best judgment. You also have the manual way of clearing your video cache there. Unlocking list is basically for no-fly zones. If you have permission to fly in a no-fly zone for a certain period of time, you contact DJI. They'll put you on an unlock list and it'll be displayed there. Your device name, uh, what you wanna name your drone or have it displayed as. Uh, full screen mode, this is whether or not you can tap once. Here, we'll show you real quick, I'll exit out. You can tap, tap and swipe up once to full screen it, or you can choose to have two fingers tap and swipe, swipe up. Basically, two fingers so you don't accidentally put it into full screen mode if you don't mean to. Into your about, this is your app versions, your aircraft update versions, firmware update versions, all displayed right here in one nice neat little package. App I'm running at the current time of filming is 4.2.6. Aircraft is 1.00.02. You can also check for updates with these buttons here. It will check for updates, reach out, touch the servers. If you have updates, it'll prompt you uh, if you want to update now or at a different time. And at the bottom, flight controller number, your serial number there, just in case anything were to happen. For your home point settings, you can choose whether or not you want to set your 
set the current aircraft position as your home point. This is good if you're going to be stationary at a flying field or at your house and you know you're going to be launching from your backyard or a flight pad out in the flying field. That's good for that. This is set current RC location. It's not really your RC, it's your phone because it uses your phone's GPS, but it's basically wherever you are at the current time that you want your aircraft to return to home. So say if you're on a boat and you launch from the dock and you're flying and you're following your boat, you definitely don't want your home point being the dock because you're going to be flying away from the dock and if you fly to a certain point where the battery recognizes it only has enough battery to make it home back to the dock, it's going to leave your control and it's going to go back to the dock and you're going to have to go chase it and fight for control and then cancel out of return to home. It's a big mess, so just be aware. That's why you want to use set current location as you return to home. Just in case you do happen to lose connection, it will return to the RC uh, location. But with that being said, keep in mind that it is only set to that current location when you set it. If you set your return to home point, say you, you this, the easiest reference is docking a boat. If you dock a boat on a sandbar or you dock a boat on an island, and you set current home point at that island and you drive away and you happen to lose connection to your drone, your drone is gonna fly back to that island or sandbar as you return to home and it's no longer gonna follow your, your RC. So that's kind of confusing how they put it. Um, hope that didn't confuse you further. Sorry if it did. Enable intelligent flight modes. This is definitely, uh, if you wanna fly in sport mode, this will keep you from accidentally flipping it in sport mode if you don't want to fly in sport mode. This also opens up a lot of your intelligent flight features that we'll go over here in a little bit. Return to home altitude. This is definitely something that you want to set per location. If you're familiar with my channel, I basically fly at my house or the flying field a lot. So the max altitude probably would be 50 to 75 feet that I would set it. Uh, right now it's 46 meters uh, because I was doing some testing around some some higher obstacles that I wanted to clear. Below the return to home altitude is beginner mode. You can flip this on or off whether or not you want your Mavic Air to be severely slowed down and limited. Beginner mode will enable altitude and distance will both be limited to 100 feet or 30 meters. Beginner mode can be turned off in the main controller settings, basically just where we were. But you remember, as you were initially setting up your Mavic Air, you were given the option whether or not you wanted to start in beginner mode. So that is just where in the settings you can find that. Maximum altitude, I have it set to 500 meters. I know I'm in America, 400 feet max AGL, but if you're flying within buildings, it's 400 feet above the highest um, point of that building. Doesn't mean that I fly at 500 meters, that just means I have it set to 500 meters. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know I rarely break 100 to 200 feet. Uh, I just, I don't find any reason to fly high unless I'm trying to shoot a bridge, which uh, to get a better vantage point, I usually go up to the max 400 feet. Um, but do keep in mind um, your local rules and regulations on altitudes and distances that you can fly. Speaking of distance, your distance limit is right below it. I have it turned off, but once you turn it on, you'll see that the max flight distance can be from 15 meters to 8,000 meters, and obviously I have it set for the maximum 8,000 meters. Once again, remember in America, you have to keep it line of sight. Whatever, I get it, but you know what? I like to keep it at the max distances, but it's always turned off. So, next. Options into advanced settings. This is basically, you know what, I'm not gonna talk about this because if you're in advanced settings and you're messing around, then you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing in your advanced settings, you're more than likely gonna end up crashing your drone because there's these basically affect the maneuverability and speed of your aircraft and the reaction and agility of the Mavic Air. Um, the good thing to know about this at the bottom of the advanced settings is your RC signal lost. If in the event your Mavic Air becomes disconnected from your RC controller, this is what it's gonna do. I have it set to return to home. If ever it gets disconnected, it will return to home. You have three options, return to home, landing, and hover. If you are inside of a building or house, you obviously don't want your drone you don't want your Mavic Air flying up to 46 meters inside your house because obviously it's gonna hit the roof. So you can either have it hover or land. 
uh, but for me I just keep it at return to home. That's going to cover MC settings. Let's move on to your visual navigation settings. These are your selections and your options for your vision sensors, what you want it to do while you are flying. You have the options to turn everything off. Let's read through them real quick. At the very top, enable forward and backward obstacle sensing. Aircraft will automatically hover when obstacle is detected in forward or backward obstacle sensing. Maximum speed using obstacle sensing is 18 miles per hour. Enable obstacle avoidance will automatically enable return to home obstacle check. Enter advanced settings to make changes. Ford obstacle sensing cameras have a 50 degree horizontal field of view and a 38 degree vertical field of view. Obstacles outside these ranges will not be detected. Note, forward and backward obstacle sensing camera cannot function when light is insufficient. Obstacle sensing accuracy is also affected by obstacle size. Refer to the user manual for details. Basically, it's saying don't fly in between tree branches because they won't be able to detect it. I don't like this because it limits my drone to 18 miles per hour. So we'll continue on. Enable horizontal obstacle avoidance and tap to fly. Enable backward flying and active track when active track aircraft will automatically fly backwards if a subject being tracked is moving towards it. Ensure there are no obstacles in the flight path after activating. Enable obstacle avoidance and active track when activated the aircraft will avoid obstacles horizontally otherwise it will slow to a stop. When activated display radar chart. When activated the user interface will display a chart that indicates obstacle detection in real time. This is what it looks like. You see these red bars here? This is obstacle sensing in real time. This is letting you know that there's obstacles in front of you. Don't fly any further. Try to avoid it. Advanced vision settings. Enable downward visioning positioning. This helps your accuracy when returned to home. Super accurate, very intelligent, great feature to have. All of these landing protection, aircraft will check the landing area when uh, this is good uh, in the event that it does uh, somehow get off track and off course. If it, say, I was coming in the other day landing and uh, my patio furniture was in the way and it wouldn't land because it recognized that there's patio furniture there and it wasn't safe to land. So that's a good feature to have. And return to home, obstacle detection. Uh, basically, it'll sense and avoid obstacles when returning to home if there's something in line so it will go you know shortest point is from a to b it will fly direct route back to home and it will avoid obstacles remote control settings you can calibrate your remote control you just have to be disconnected from your drone maintain the app running you'll be able to do it stick mode mode one mode two mode three mode one throttle is on the right your pitch and your roll is on the left mode two your throttle is on the left and on the right is your pitch and roll. Mode three is some funky combination of the two and you can customize what your controls can be with the custom settings here as well. Getting into Wi-Fi selection, you can have auto or custom. Auto will automatically select the best channel with the least amount of noise. Basically noise is, you see all these red bars? That's noise, that's bad. The higher the RSSI receiver signal strength index is, the worse off that channel will be to use. So your one through 11 channels are 2.4. If you're in the States or in a country that allows 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz to be used, you'll see the 5.8 gigahertz being the channels 149 through 165. If you choose custom, and you scroll down to the very bottom of the screen, you will be able to select your channel. So I'm gonna select 149, it gives me the prompt, would you like to do this? I would like to say yes. Notice that the channel mode changed from 2.8 to uh, 2.4 to 5.8 gigahertz. And now you can see the signal's going crazy because I'm the one on that signal. Blue means that's the current channel that you're using. Red means unstable quality, and green obviously is you're good to go stable quality. Let's go back to auto. One thing about 5.8 gigahertz is it's good at short distances, but it's not so good at long distances. If you're gonna fly further away, 2.4 gigahertz will be your best option. Although 2.4 gigahertz is a heavily utilized band and frequency. So just keep that in mind. You may have a lot of uh, competing signals to deal with. Moving on, aircraft battery shows your three cells and your battery, gives you the voltage in between the cells. Uh, you wanna keep them as balanced as possible. Don't worry, the charger does that 
if in the event your battery goes bad, it will let you know and you will see a deviation in the voltages between the cells. Just something to know and keep an eye on. Your low battery warning, it's a slider. You can basically select which percentage you would like your low battery alarm to go off on. I leave it at the default. These batteries usually don't like to be discharged all the way. Your flight time is how many minutes of flight you've had since powering on the device and taking off. So while you're in flight, you'll see this timer moving. Details, this is the details of the battery. You'll see your serial number, uh, serial number of the battery, your production date, which mine is happened to be January of 2018, and your, the number of times charged. Gimbal mode, FPV or follow. FPV is as it sounds, it's direct straight line. In follow, you'll get slight deviation of the camera as you're turning to kind of assist your visual cues and tracking as you're turning. You can have the option to recenter your gimbal, adjust your gimbal, which you'll be able to select whether you want to rotate it, roll, or you can tap yaw, and then auto calibrate gimbal, which we'll run through it real quick. It's simple, it takes no time at all. It'll recognize this, uh, place it on a flat surface, so it'll recognize it's on a flat surface, and then your gimbal calibration will go through a couple of steps. And it will complete. Next one below it is your general settings. So we're back to where we started. That is, in a nutshell, your settings that you can choose and select. Um, build the Mavic Air to your flying style and basically have fun with it. It's fun to go out and fly. It's fun to test and uh, do new things and just have fun with it. Just be safe. Remember to set your return to home points, set your return to home altitudes, fly within line of sight, and fly safe. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Any and all help is appreciated. I definitely appreciate the views. I definitely appreciate the comments and definitely appreciate your subscribes. Thank you to all subscribers. We're almost at 2000. That's incredible. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are fun to talk to, uh, conversate with. I love hearing your stories about how you're doing and what you're doing with your drones. So keep it up. Got more stuff in the pipe. I'm going to continue to do DJI products, but I'm also going to be incorporating other items um, such as racing drones and other different quads other than pre-built RTFs. I'm going to do some build videos and stuff like that. So definitely thanks a lot for sticking with me and supporting me with your subscribes uh, and your comments. I really appreciate it. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks a lot, and we will see you next time.